Hey, what's up, guy? Francis Bacon. Uh, it's hard to describe. There's really no one that... Uh, he was a, a painter, obviously. There was no one that really did what he did. I can't, I'm trying to think. Obviously, uh, when he was younger, he had some contact with uh, surrealists, you know, the surrealist movement. But in terms of the artwork that he ended up doing uh, since the 30s and the 40s and yeah, there he is man what a geez what a work uh, what a workstation there um there's nobody really liked them him in terms of you know i always say like in the 80s horror like clive barker right you know, and, and that kind of stuff the surrealist aspect of it. i always liked the surrealist aspect to horror films um in particular that they invoked that uh and that's when it's sort of combined, I would say. Uh, you look at his art, everything is pretty dark, and grotesque, right? Obviously, um, yeah. You know, like, what, where did the guy get this from? You know what I mean? And it's funny, too, this, uh, the book as much, this guy, uh, Luigi Ficacci, uh, he doesn't really talk too much about. Uh, Baker, he talks about, I, I guess, he, his view of what the art is about, right? Uh, and so as much as uh, the art is in here, the writing, I like here, right? Uh, Luigi's like, the tragic sense of existence is not a constant theme in every civilization, but it is a specific condition of European man in the modern era. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I'm just showing you uh, art here. I like here. No one more, uh, is it? no one more readily than he, after the epochal trauma inflicted on humanity by the events of World War II, expressed the singular tragedy of the individual in a society that was externally victorious and marching inexorably towards progress. Right, a progress that could apparently not lead anywhere else than to well-being and clarification of all the obscure aspects of existence. And, well, you know how that went, but to be frank and. To his credit, Francis Bacon was, didn't really say, like, I don't know, he, when he would mention stuff about his art, like, this is the famous one. This is the one that put him on the map here. Three studies for figures at the base of a crucifixion in 1944. Um, yes. He never really said what his inspiration was from. It's almost like it just came to him. Um, and that was kind of, uh, that was sort of, after all the surrealist uh, and their political agendas, it was nice to uh, get that from someone trying to get, uh, you know, with the aspect of life, right? the expression of horror. This is like some of his earliest work. Obviously, a cubist element, but everything is just very, very dark. Okay? It's ugly, but it's beautiful, right? It's demonic, right? It's sublime. Uh, by the way, I, I, I only know who Francis, I learned about Francis Bacon from Jonathan Bowden. Good. Uh, look at that. Anyway, this painting. Now, I've actually been to the Museum of Modern Art, the MoMA, right, in Manhattan. Actually, I was there about a month before the situation occurred two years ago. And they had this painting here, right, the famous one. This one uh, was like the next one. That was painting 1946. And you can see it, right? You can see like like the Hellraiser. You can see, I hate this term, body horror. I don't. I'm only using that in quotation marks. Right? Um, uh, you, you see, like the just the, always the war, always the war. Of course, he never really said that. This is my statement on World War Two. If you go to MoMA, right, and you see this painting, if you look at the plaque that's there. Uh, it is a very facetious, very totally not uh, anything to do with the painting uh, uh, explanation of what this painting represents. If you go there, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, look at this. You know, just the, uh, you know, just horror. You know, I mean, where this guy got this from, you know. Who can who can say, right? Okay. Um, yeah, you know, and there's more coverage of Bacon now for other reasons. Oh, I don't look at, you know, the guy was an open homosexual, um, but re regardless, uh, there's something too like this. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is his boyfriend. 
George Dyer, right? Not Danny Dyer. Uh, like almost like a zombie, right? Rotting, uh, you know, something that you would see much later. Uh, just, uh, is it degenerate? Like, look at this. This is from uh, 1950. My mother was born this year. It looks like something from, like, the thing, right? Um, I keep saying that the, the, and to round it out with what this uh, Italian writer has put forth that I really enjoy. Apparently, one of uh, the big things for him was obviously photos, right? Photography, obviously, it's a artistic resource for a lot of painters, right? And the guy, the Italian guy here mentions, <laughs> the Italian guy, uh, Luigi mentions, um, photography being a, a huge thing for him, yeah, and how, um, what Bacon most liked about the photograph was his fluidity of surface, his limit, its inability to get under the surface of things, I keep saying, looking what's, getting a glimpse of what's behind the veil, okay, is the object of all this horror business, right? uh, you get, it's a pagan reflex to see what's behind the veil, um, and it's inability to get under the surface of things, but uh, you you can't you can see glimpses of it. Okay? But he seemed to like that external externality in his paintings here. Right? But here's where I want to end it. All right? uh, this is, to me, the mystery of painting today is how appearance can be made. I know it can be illustrated. I know it can be photographed. But how can this thing be made so that you catch the mystery? of appearance within the mystery of the making, right? Uh, the mystery, right? Uh, getting a glimpse of the mystery, not trying to solve the mystery, Scooby-Doo, right? Not trying to solve the mystery. Mysteries are there for a reason. It's okay to not ever know uh, uh, the mysteries. That's the, that's, that's the advice I would give for the, uh, the post-Western uh, European era.